Well, I actually thought it was a rehearsal, but I see it's a rehearsal with a live audience. Okay, so I'm not quite ready. But let's <laughs> let's let's just do this. What what can we do better on a you know lovely Friday afternoon other than talk about packaging, right? Uh, so what was I thinking about back in February? Uh, hi, my name is Tiago. I come from the whereabouts of Lisbon in beautiful and sunny Portugal, uh, which you should visit. It's an amazing place. And by the way, uh, we're having our first PyCon. I learned that yesterday. Uh, and in the end of September or August, check it out. Go visit. Beautiful weather, cheap beer, a beautiful place, friendly folks other than me. So come visit. <clears throat> now, back in 2015, uh, and Bilbao at your Python, I met this gentleman, uh, Nicholas. And Nicholas is not an orangutan. Nicholas, are you there? Yes. You're there, okay? Uh, so that's a proof. Uh, but after having checked with him, he liked this image. Uh, it's the picture he uses for his GitHub avatar. And back then, Nicholas was talking about the BBC Microbit and the Mew Editor. Uh, if you don't know about the Mew Editor, uh, it's uh, a very uh, beginner-friendly Python editor. Uh, and it's much more than that. It actually edits your code, runs your code, debugs your code, works with all sorts of tiny and fun microcontrollers like the microbit back then. Uh, and of course, it's written in Python and it bundles Python. Now, uh, being beginner friendly uh, means, uh, it meant back then and it still means today, that is a, it is a single file download. So beginners don't need to go, which Python version do I download? What about an editor? How do I make them go together? It's a mess. Uh, and we all know about that. So it's a single file download. You install, you go, uh, at least on Windows and Mac, which, is, which are obviously the most common platforms that beginners and most people use around the world. Uh, and if you don't know it, you should use it. It's, it's very fun. It looks like this. You type your code, you hit the play button, it, it just goes, okay? It's amazing. So back then, the Mew editor and Nicholas made beginners all over the world like this. They were happy because they were, it was easy to learn about Python and how computers work. Great. But time passes, uh -huh, and time passes more and more and more. And at some point, users want more. Of course, and that's perfectly natural. And uh, they wanted to be able to use third-party packages from PyPI with Mew. Okay, and uh, which is perfectly reasonable uh, and leveraging the huge ecosystem of things uh, it's, is one of the amazing things that draw people to Python. Now, uh, the development team gave it a few shots. So how do we go about this? And after a few attempts, we came up to the conclusion that, well, Mu should actually create a virtual environment. Well, behind the scenes, beginners don't care about virtual environments and then grab packages from PyPI and install them there. Okay, this is the technically correct solution. Uh, and it, it's actually working a few years later, uh, but that made us kind of, okay, stop. <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? We, we want to do this, but uh, packaging wise, this is not going to be easy. Uh, and now if our previous talk was about packaging within the Python ecosystem, so you package something that you will later pip install. So we are within the Python ecosystem. Now, shipping Mu or a generic graphical user interface application goes out of the Python ecosystem and out into the world to users that don't know or don't care about Python. So common thoughts and questions. Do we have the VM module on the Python we bundle so that we can create the virtual environment? More importantly, not as trivial, does the Python we bundle on Windows or Mac support TLS? Because we need TLS or AKA SSL uh, to speak to PyPI. Otherwise, we can't really reliably download packages. Uh, and the clicker clicks. Uh, and we were back then already using some customized Python runtimes to ship with Mu. Uh, in particular, for memory, we had to add or hack or bake in TK. Uh, so as to support the total module, that's beginner friendly. Uh, so there was this thing of a consistent Python runtime that we are, as developers, we were using building Mu and that we were shipping to users, 
beginners don't really care which version of Python they're running as long as it's kind of three-ish, okay? But the consistency of behaviors across platforms, of these hidden behaviors, is important. So this kind of, well, was development focus? How do we do these things? And as time progressed, not only users and developers had these thoughts, but platforms evolved and new Python releases came out and they're coming as out every year now, so it's crazy fast. Uh, and on Mac uh, in particular, uh, Apple required kind of a secondary additional stamp for software uh, to run, uh, say, natively and without uh, kind of frightening warnings on users' uh, platforms. So there's this notarization process that was new for us. And the tools that we were using back then didn't know how to do it. And we didn't too. How, what, how do we go about this? So move forward to 2019 at EuroPython again in Basel, and there's Nicholas, and there's the new editor development team, and there's beginners all over the world. And Nicholas goes, oh, what are we going to do about this? And the development team goes, huh, this is not going to be easy. What do we do? We don't want beginners all over the world to look like this. Okay, We want to give them the new they want and the tools they can use to explore and learn. Okay, And one of the culprits here was packaging me in particular on Windows and Mac OS. Uh, these are the topics. I mean, uh, different tools per platform with different capabilities, with different Python version support and everything. It was a mess, okay? Uh, it worked, but it felt like daunting. Move forward to another year, and that's Tiago back home, okay? In his sunny Portuguese beaches. Amazing. And I dared say the famous first words of many, many, many open source and volunteer projects, and that's, how hard can this be, okay? Who hasn't said it before? Ah, this, this can be done. Uh, and so this August something, at one something in the morning, what was I thinking? I said, let there be pop, okay? Uh, so I created pop. Uh, uh, and pop is about native packaging, uh, but, but I, I I, I rather prefer the word native feeling, okay? And what do I mean about native feeling? Now, I want to bridge the world between developers and common end users, okay? Uh, so for a developer, what's native is I can use any Python version, any GUI toolkit, any dependencies, okay? And I want to leverage the, the knowledge I have on within Python ecosystem packaging, okay? I don't want to learn new things. Now, for end users, okay, they're not Pythonistas. They don't care. They just want to use an application. They want a single file download or an app store download. We'll get to that. That's the easy part. Uh, they want the native installation feeling. On Windows, it's like the next, 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 and you never read the things. You just go next. On Mac, you drag things. On Linux, there's no native, but we'll talk about Linux. Uh, and you want the native feeling for launching. You want the start menu and with a funny icon or the Mac launch thingy and blah, blah, blah. You want it to be a, just another application. And this you want a lot. You don't want to distribute applications out to the world with a huge guide saying, well, if you right click and open a CLI and type recorded. this funky command, hi there, uh, and type this funky command, and then you can run the application. That's not gonna work, okay? Users need to click a thing, and there you go. That's, there's your application. So signing a notar notarization and everything, that's very important and boring and hard. So that's what Pup wants to do. Uh, and it's, it's been doing that up to a point uh, because we've been distributing new uh, package and we don't have lots and lots and lots of complaints. It seems to work. So how does it go? You set up your project and make it pip installable. Your project, your GUI application should be launchable with Python-M, blah, your project. This, these are the requirements, nothing else. Now, optionally, you give it an icon and a text license and a signing certificate for the full-blown experience, of course. And Pup gives you a ready-to-use MSI file that you can install either as a user or as a, as a system level, so it can be available to all users. It gives you a nice user interface and the start menu thingy. 
On Mac, it gives you a disk image file that's native, that may require agreeing to a license if you want, and it's a native app bundle, what users, common users see as an icon, and you can have it anywhere and just double click it, and it goes. And even though all of this is still very young and very exploratory, uh, even more young, even more brittle, and even more exploratory, I've been exploring the app image thingy on Linux, uh, well, and which is very, 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 very rough, and it seems to work. Uh, uh, so this is essentially pop, and you go from one to the other with a command, a single command. So let me give you a demo on the first act, okay? And the first act of the demo is this. This is macOS. This is my project. I won't bore you with the code, but you see there's a setup py nearly empty in the setup CFG, it's mostly declarative, okay? And I could pip install this thing locally, but I instead I will pop package this, okay? Go, let it do its thing. And for fun, okay, let's do the same on Windows. It's the same project. There you go, same project, now I'll type pop package dot, bam, go, do your thing. And for additional fun, let's make it, well, <laughs> package dot it's the same project go and we'll leave it at that now now on on the mac platform pop will talk to apple servers and tim cook is there waiting for the request or it might fail we don't know uh so what is what is pop doing now click go what is how does it actually work well it starts by laying out a full python installation in your build directory and by full, I mean, it includes everything. Like, you need the VM module, it's there. You need TK and Turtle, it's there. You need URL, lib, blah, 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 it's there, okay? It's the full standard library, so it's native for the developer, okay? It's cool. And then it uses that Python installation's pip to pip install your project into that Python installation. Along the way, it collects metadata and blah, 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 of course. And then it goes crazy and shuffles files around in a way that makes sense uh, in the target operating system. So in Windows, it needs to be laid out like this. On Mac, it will be in the, an application bundle, which is actually a directory that has some metadata and files go like that. And on Linux app image, it goes a different way. So it kind of shuffles files around and cleans up a few things along the way. And lastly, it uses native tools to produce a native package be it an MSI on Windows, or a disk image on Mac, or app images, blah, blah, blah. And optionally, throughout this process, it will sign and notarize the artifact. So the final artifact will always be that single file that we want, say, to distribute to our end users. Is this simple? Well, it is, okay? Is there any magic? Is magic pink? Is magic blue? Well, I think magic is blue, uh, but there's no magic here. There's essentially this full Python installation that I kind of skipped. It's a full Python installation. You don't worry about that. We all know that, right? But this one is reluctable, and it, ha it does have minimal system dependencies. And this is the magic. It's not my work, okay? I'm just, I'm just putting pieces together. Uh, this is the amazing work of Gregory Sork uh, and this project that's Python standalone builds. Uh, I can only say good things about Gregory uh, from both technically and in terms of response time. While exploring this, uh, I had to ask Gregory for help in a few, uh, on a few occasions, and his feedback uh, in terms of speed, like two days later, he's based in San Francisco, and the accuracy of technical detail and analysis is just amazing. So Gregory, you're the savior, okay? Uh, so let's get back to our demo and see how it goes. Okay, act two, let's see if the, the team at Apple has, has done their work. Okay, the team at Apple has done, okay, there's this process here, the notarizing. Apparently it has been completed. Uh, it was really fast, okay? So you see at some point it requested and waited for a minute, blah, blah, blah. So there's a, a distribution directory here, which I will explore, go. And there's the disk image for puppy, that's the project, okay? And I'll open the disk image and there's the license, I'll have to agree, okay? This is the MIT license, I agree. And for those of you that are somehow familiar with the Mac, this is a pretty, pretty much native experience. And there's your icon. Yes, it's Mu inspired, but it's kind of in a box because that's puppy. Uh, 
And I'm dragging it not to the applications folder, but I'm dragging it anywhere. I don't care. Uh, things just work here or so. Uh, Mr. Tim Cook says, I'll double click it. And there's Puppy, okay? Puppy is a GUI app. It's actually an app that I created to kind of explore Pup. And it shows me internals of the Python runtime. So I see, okay, how's the working directory? What's the uh, syspath and things like that. This is Puppy on Mac. It runs, uh, it's apparently it's been packaged with Python 3.9.13, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. Uh, I'm not too much concerned with that. I'll quit it. Let's go and see how uh, our other builds are going. So this is Linux, okay? Lots of errors, okay? <laughs> don't, 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 don't read that. This needs improvement. Uh, but I'll go to the disk folder again. And if I look at this, there's the puppy app image, okay? And I can run it and I can ship it to any, <laughs> how fun, any Linux system in the world it might work. It won't, but it, there are, the odds that it runs are, are well, reasonable. And this one is Python 3.8. It's the same puppy, okay? It's same icon, same application. Uh, and I'll quit it. Uh, how do you do this on Linux? You go like there. And then there's Windows, uh, which should be right about here. It's also packaged. It did sign the binaries and things with a fake sign, a code signing certificate. So this, this certificate I'm using on the Mac is good, but on Windows it isn't. Uh, but for the purposes of this, it's, I'm running on my own system. Again, I'll explore the this directory, go. And this puppy, it's an MSI file. I open it and there's your installer with the logo and funny things and the licenses and you accept it and you go and you install and this takes time, okay? <clears throat> but we have time, we have time. So let, let it do its thing. Uh, and I have ideas about, you know, making this process even faster because I think this is slow. A puppy is a very tiny application. Uh, the new editor is bigger and this process is kind of slow and we want beginners to, yeah, to experience things immediately. So, uh, but that's a, different, that's a different thing. So let it copy its things. Today, it's done. It offers you to launch puppy. I won't launch it here to show you that. We have a nice start menu with the same icon, blah, 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 and I click it. And this is the native experience for Windows user. And there's puppy and in this case, it's running with Python 3.10. We can ask Pop to use different Python versions. It, by default, it uses the current, whichever it grabs, okay? So it's, it's running, it's okay. Uh, it's like a, a mini demo for you to see. I typed one command and I get three artifacts for the three platforms. Uh, and that's nice. I like that idea, okay? So what's the status? It's dangerous, <laughs> okay? Uh, so Pop has no tests at all. Uh, testing this is very difficult, okay? Really testing that your software is picking up some other software and packaging as it should and installs as it should and it runs as it should. How do you go about that? Uh, I know that Russell Keith McGee of Beware is putting some effort and some thoughts into the equivalent and the great inspiration that's Briefcase, a project that we used before to package me, uh, and is putting some thoughts into how to test all of this in the next month. So I'll certainly keep an eye on that and have discussions with him. So there are no tests. Uh, and PUP stands for Pluggable Micro Packager. It, while it's currently technically pluggable, the architecture API is kind of over-engineered there, completely badly designed here. So it's very exploratory. Uh, it will be pluggable uh, in a useful sense so that anyone can kind of customize the, the build process or the packaging process uses different uh, kind of different artifact or whatever. The docs exist and they need some love. There is need for platform polish, okay? I don't like the font that's used on the Windows installer. Maybe that's just me. Uh, we'll be sprinting, I'll be sprinting on Saturday along with the amazing new development team. We're kind of one and we're focus, uh, focusing on that. So join us. Uh, we will certainly have an amazing time. Uh, so I would say the status is exploratory, uh, but not YOLO, okay? Uh, maybe in the future it will be, the lessons from Pop will be integrated into other tools, uh, or maybe just thrown away, I don't know, okay? There's some commitment, but it's clearly exploratory. Uh, maybe someday, maybe Saturday, I don't know, tomorrow, uh, Pop can package single file scripts. Fun for beginners. Uh, uh, Maybe we can, use, can package Linux flat pack once you go. Uh, 
Do Linux app image, you get half the world of Linux. Say, oh, that's the worst thing in the world. You can't do that because things and Linux and people just kind of like to fight, right? So I think I'm going to focus on Linux flat pack just to bring out the anger in the defenders of Linux snap D's or something. Yeah, let's wake up everybody. I don't know. Uh, the publish to stores is an important and easy step now. Okay, pushing these artifacts to the Apple thingy store or to the Windows blah, blah, blah store is easy now. Whether we want it to do, to do it like automated or not, I'm not sure, but that step is easy. Uh, supporting other Python runtimes is a thing that deserves thought, okay? And I'll get to that. Uh, so this is the status, maybe the vision for Pup. Uh, let's get back to our demo in the third act because we clean up after ourselves. Uh, I don't want to step back yet. We'll step back in a minute. Uh, but here, uh, I ran and installed, uh, on Windows I actually installed Pup, so I will uninstall it because, I mean, I clean up after myself, so I run the app with thingy. And there's Pup, you see, it's installed natively somewhere here. Where's that? Let me refresh it. Where's this puppy, okay? Uh, installed natively pretty much alongside every other thing that's installed here uh, with metadata, okay, the version, blah, blah, blah. I'll uninstall it. And away it goes. So this is perfectly native for Windows users. On the old school, you download the file and you install it. Um, now on Mac, you just delete it, it's simple. And an app image on Linux, again, you just delete it and you're set. Uh, I'll leave it at that, I don't care. It's just kind of showing you the, the native process of it. Uh, it's very native, it, it is. It's simple, but it, that's it, that's what it is. Now, I have three minutes plus five, because <laughs> I timed it into, into uh, 25 minutes, to step back for a minute and think a bit, what, what kinds of thoughts and questions does this bring? Uh, the first is, well, for beginners, or let's say for volunteers, I mean, most of us do lots of things as volunteers. So I'm not, I'm not going to be a professional in a given uh, domain. Sharing applications is something important that we all like to do and that beginners certainly like to do. Um, and okay, if you're working on the web, you just share a URL, let's say. Uh, if you're working server side, you don't care because you don't do that for beginners or for fun. But for, for desktop applications are important uh, in many aspects, but they need to be signed. They need to be stamped. And getting one such certificate is not only expensive, but it's difficult, okay? I had lots of trouble with Apple, supposedly, you just pay and you go next, 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 and you go, right? But if you, my certificate for the Apple thingy, yeah, it cost me a hundred thingies, dollars, euro, I don't know, but there's like 38 different options. Which certificate do I want to create this? It's difficult. And for Windows, it's an even bigger mess. Who do I buy it from? Who do I trust? Will it work? Uh, do you need even more seals and stamps for, to do that? Um, so I wonder, and I have no solution, but where is Let's Encrypt for code? How could it ever work? Is it email-based? Because Let's Encrypt for, let's say, service certificates works, works based on domain name validation. How could it work for people? Based on an email? Based on something? I think this is important. It would allow us on Mew to have a button that say package this and ship it to the world so that beginners and learners and people doing things could easily share their desktop applications. How do we do this? This is not a Python problem. This is a kind of an in industry-wide problem. I think it's important. And now about Python and C Python in particular. Now, we have been, and the, the, the success of Python throughout the past 30 years or so is the, it's because it's very easy to integrate with other libraries, okay? Mostly C written. So you can easily bring in other libraries or embed Python into other code. But that's, you need some level of skill that most people don't have, okay? 
Uh, the way pup works is much simpler. It's, much, it's very dumb. Okay? It grabs Python, goes from there, and shuffles files, and there you go. And it works. Um, and pup works the way it works, because someone like Gregory uh, did the work in building Python standalone, which is pretty much self-contained. Well, this distribution includes metadata uh, that tools like pop can use to figure out what's where, what, what can I count on, what can I use, and maybe the Python we get from the PSF, python.org, could include some metadata. We don't have an embeddable distribution other than a Windows only that does not include the central library and that does not include this and does not include that. So it's kind of a toy thing if you want the full experience. But there's no such thing for Mac. There's no such thing for Linux. And Linux is complicated because there's, there's not a single Linux platform there. There are bazillions of different Linux platforms and dependencies and libraries. So I think this deserves thought because this is the path uh, that uh, Russell Keith McGee three years ago identified as one of the potential black swans in the Python ecosystem. And that's the ability of building and shipping applications that run on your desktop, and of course, ultimately, on mobile platforms, because there are bazillions of mobile users and bazillions of mobile platforms, okay? Um, so people consume software through mobile phones, and you either work server-side and you're on the web, or if you want to uh, use a local native application, whatever that means, uh, you're not going to do it with Python easily. So I'll wrap it up. Thank you very much. I want to thank, first, the EuroPython organizers and volunteers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas, for the inspiration. Thank you to the Mu development team. Tim is there. Vasco is there. Carlos is down there doing amazing things with microbits. Thanks to Gregory for his Python build standalone project. It's amazing. Thanks to Russell for his inspiration and beware and lots of things. Thanks to Donald Stuffed. He works for the Python Packaging Authority, and he considered the pup name for us, because it was his. Thank you, Donald. Thanks to Glyph. Great words on how to sign and notarize on Mac OS. Great blog posts. And he is actually the first person in the world that ran a pub package Mac OS properly signed and notarized. Thanks, Glyph. And thanks to Alistair, who was, up until recently, the maintainer of DMG Build, an amazing tool to build disk images on the Mac. So thank you all very much. Bye-bye. actually only one or two minutes but if there is a question and we have a break now so yeah come here so thank you for the talk very interesting it brought up a lot of bad memories mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I packaged PyGTK for using PyTWXE for a long time uh -huh. uh, so one of the things I used to struggle with uh, you when, when packaging Py GTK apps yeah. was all the various Windows dependencies I had to download separately, put it in all the appropriate places yeah. so it would be relocatable when Py2exe would find it, bundle it up, and it could go. Does Pup have to deal with similar issues or you don't have them? Okay. Pup is really dumb and stupid, okay? And it's the work of lots of people. I just put the things together. Pup is as stupid as I told you, okay? It lays out a good Python, good relocatable Python distribution, and pip installs. So okay. if, in development mode, your thing works, if, when you pip install into a local Python, if it works, okay, right. the libraries will work, okay? On Linux, is a bit harder because dependencies kind of don't come along, but you say you pip install something that brings a wheel that has DLLs on Windows for Qt or for uh, GTK or whatever, they should work. They should be properly, they will be placed in the Python library, dynamic library loading so it, path. So it should work. It, it will capture everything from the Venv. Yeah. Okay. It should. And, okay, but uh, let's try. And, and, and will it, does Pop like strip out extra things that are not required by the pocket uh, to? Not now. Use? Not okay. now. It's an optimization that, that can be, okay. now you get everything. You can get everything. What, what, the only optimization that Pop does is it strips away static libraries because the Python standalone project ships stat static and dynamic libraries and all sorts yes. of things. It strips away those and it pre-compiles the whole standard library and pre-compiles the whole project. 
That's the only optimization it does now, but it could be clever, like PyTwixy does that, PyInstaller does that. It's, it's, it's clever enough and follows the graph of dependencies, throws yeah. away things and make it kind of tinier and faster. It, it doesn't always work. There are many times uh, yeah. I would have so, to explicitly add. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so pub goes the other way around. Yeah. Uh, okay, take everything. It's just an extra megabyte. Uh, for now it works, okay? But it's very exploratory. Oh, cool, thank you. Cool, you're welcome. Um, so first of all, thank you for the talk. It was really awesome. Uh, secondly, um, I like the fact that PUP is stupid and simple and you can't get the complicated you know, dependency graph problems that are a pain in the neck to debug and blah, 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 blah. So simply, simplicity is a superpower as well. This isn't a question. This is just me sort of spouting, really. <laughs> I know we're over time and things. But, uh, and the last thing is you said that PUP uh, had no tests. Well, yeah. um, you know, Mu's been downloaded, you know, hundreds of thousands of times since we started using Pub, and uh, you know, we g given that number of downloads and the fact that uh, we don't get that many um, bug reports about installers, I think you know, Pub no, it is, has is comprehensively tests. tested yeah, yeah. by it has real by, life tests. and this is, here's the important bit: by beginner coders. Yes, and by definition, that means they probably don't know what they're doing as well because this is their first attempt at uh, installing kind of an IDE or something like that. So, you know, uh, applause. I mean, that, so. the purpose, I mean, if there's a purpose and objective is make making your life easier. That's the initial motivation. And they, oh, it's a mess. What are we going to do? Well, let's, it should be easy, right? <laughs> it's not, but it, it seems to work, okay? So let's try it out. If you want, join me on Saturday and try and package something else. It will probably fail and we'll fix it. <laughs> or not, or we'll go grab a beer, it's okay. <laughs> so again, thank you very much. Thank you.